Ever wondered why some soccer players have a natural flair on the field? It's like they're dancing with the ball, weaving through opponents as if they're not even there. This grace, this flair, it's not just talent or luck, it's built on a foundation of fundamental soccer skills. These fundamentals include control, passing, shooting, and not to forget, understanding the game. They're the bricks and mortar of any successful soccer player. Without them, the whole structure crumbles. Even the most celebrated players, the Messis and the Ronaldos, the ones who seem to have been born with a soccer ball at their feet, they too, continuously hone these basic skills. Mastering the fundamentals isn't just about becoming a better player, it's about understanding and appreciating the game in its purest form. It's about respect for the sport we all love. Remember, without a solid foundation, even the most talented players can struggle. So let's dive into these fundamentals together, shall we? So, what are these fundamental soccer skills we're talking about? Let's break it down. First up, we have dribbling. This is the art of moving the ball on the ground while keeping it under your control. Think of Lionel Messi's captivating control of the ball. He makes it seem as if the ball is taking a walk with him. You're in charge, dictating the pace and direction, and ensuring the ball stays close to your feet. It's all about finesse and precision. Next, we have passing. This is the bread and butter of any soccer game, just like Xavi Hernandez who is a master in moving the ball from one player to another. It's a skill that requires accuracy, timing, and an understanding of your teammates' movements. Remember, a well-executed pass can be the difference between a game-winning goal, a missed opportunity. Then we have shooting. This is the act of propelling the ball towards the goal with the intention of scoring. Recollect Cristiano Ronaldo's powerful shots, it's a thrilling moment when the ball finds the back of the net. But it's not just about power. Placement, timing, and technique play a crucial role in effective shooting. And finally, we have defending. This isn't just the job of the players at the back. Every player on the pitch has a role to play in defending. It's about preventing the opposing team from scoring. This involves intercepting passes, blocking shots, and tackling players. It's a skill that requires speed, strength, and a good understanding of the game. Think of these skills as the building blocks of soccer. Each one is crucial in its own right, and they all work together to create a comprehensive skill set. Whether you're a seasoned pro or a beginner, mastering these basic skills can drastically improve your game. And remember, even the best players in the world constantly work on improving these fundamentals like Messi, Xavi, and Ronaldo. So lace up those boots, get out there, and start practicing. Because as we all know, practice makes perfect. Mastering these basic skills can drastically improve your game. We've pinpointed the key soccer skills, so how do we improve them? Let's dive in. First, enhance your dribbling through a drill that employs through cones, honing control and precision. Next, fine-tune your passing using a drill that involves hitting the ball against a sturdy surface, emphasizing accuracy, accuracy and ambidexterity. Shooting, practice power and accuracy from angles, always aiming for the corners. Corners. Defending skills can be improved by observing professional matches and imitating their positioning and movement. Finally, prioritize fitness and rest alongside your training. Remember, improvement in soccer is a gradual process that demands regular practice and dedication. So, lace up your cleats, hit field and embrace the soccer lifestyle. So, you've been practicing regularly, but how do you know if you're improving? That's the big question, isn't it? It's easy to get caught up in the daily grind, but without a way to measure your progress, you might feel like you're running on a hamster wheel. Let's talk about tracking progress, which is as vital as the practice itself. It's the compass that guides your journey, the tool that tells you if you're following the right path or if you need to change direction. One of the most effective ways to track your progress is by setting personal goals. Whether it's mastering a new trick, improving your speed or increasing your accuracy, having a clear objective gives you a target to aim for. It transforms your practice from a vague concept into a tangible achievement. But how about something a little more concrete? Consider recording your games. You'll be amazed at what you can learn from watching yourself play. It's like having your personal replay button. You can analyze your movements, identify your strengths, and pinpoint areas where you need improvement. Plus, it's a great way to see how far you've come. And don't underestimate the power of feedback. Whether it's from a coach, a teammate, or even an opponent, external perspectives can provide valuable insights. They can highlight things you might have missed and give you new ideas to incorporate into your practice. Remember, improvement isn't always linear. There will be days when you feel like you're not making any progress and that's okay. It's part of the journey. 
What's important is that you keep going, keep practicing, and keep tracking your progress. And before we wrap up, here's a little secret. The beauty of soccer lies not in the destination, but in the journey itself. Every practice session, every goal achieved, every mistake made, and every lesson learned is a step forward. With a consistent practice regime and a way to track your progress, you're on your way to becoming a better player. And that, my friend, is the true power of practice. How does Asia's soccer skills stack up against the giants of Europe and South America? This question has been on the lips of soccer enthusiasts for quite some time now. Let's dive into the current state of Asian soccer and how it compares to the football powerhouses of Europe and South America. In the grand scheme of things, Asian soccer has made significant strides over the past few decades. Yet, it's undeniable that there remains a gap when compared to Europe and South America. These continents have a rich history that's deeply intertwined with the sport, and they've consistently produced world-class players and teams. Asia, on the other hand, is still finding its footing. The continent has shown glimpses of brilliance, but consistency is the key. The Asian teams often lack the finesse and strategic depth commonly seen in European and South American squads. In terms of technical skills, Europe and South America tend to have the upper hand. Their players often demonstrate a higher level of ball control, agility, and tactical understanding. This could be attributed to the strong youth development programs and competitive leagues that exist in these regions. Furthermore, the passion for soccer in Europe and South America is palpable. The sport is ingrained into their culture. It's not just a game, but a way of life. This intense passion, coupled with a robust infrastructure, provides an ideal breeding ground for nurturing talent. Asia, however, is not without its strengths. The continent is known for its physical fitness and discipline. Asian teams are often commended for their work ethic and team spirit. These are solid foundations upon which to build. But to bridge the gap, Asia needs to focus on strengthening its youth development programs, improving its leagues, and fostering a deeper love for the sport. It's a daunting task, but not an impossible one. After all, soccer is a game of unpredictability. It's full of surprises. And who knows, with the right strategies in place, Asia could soon be giving Europe and South America a run for their money. It's clear that there's a gap, but with the right approach, it's not insurmountable. So how can Asia bridge the gap in soccer skills? It may seem daunting, but the recipe for success is straightforward. First, let's talk about training facilities. Top-notch infrastructure is a game changer. It provides the right environment to nurture skills and build the physical fitness necessary for the sport. Next up, investing in youth development. More resources need to be directed towards identifying and honing young talent. This means more youth leagues, more soccer academies, and more opportunities for young players to learn and grow. Lastly, Asian countries could take a leaf out of the playbook of successful soccer nations. Learning from the best is never a bad idea. This could involve partnerships with European or South American clubs, or even inviting seasoned coaches to share their expertise. It's a long road, but with the right steps, Asian soccer can compete on the world stage. And who knows? The next global soccer sensation might just be around the corner.